Today's scripture reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. Paul and Silas in prison. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. This is the word of our Lord. That's a long scripture passage, isn't it? But it's a great story. It really is. Have you ever been in chains? Have you ever been locked up? Now, I do have everybody's records <laughs> in my files. No. But, uh, you know, most of us have never had an experience like that. Think about what that must be. You're thrown into a dungeon, put in shackles, in stocks. Your legs, your arms are, can't move. And what are you going to do? But some of us have other kinds of shackles that tie us down. It might be maybe a recent diagnosis from the doctor that is saying some things that are not very happy. And you say, oh my, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I can get through this. It may be a, a loved one who has a serious problem. Uh, again, a doctor's diagnosis, an accident perhaps. It's like, I just don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But. The wonderful thing about our faith is that we always have a message of hope. And, and there are three things I want you to think about with this scripture. First of all, uh, the scripture talks about some things that are happening. There was a lot of stuff happening in those verses that Ariana read. And life is like that. It's a busy time. Like uh, 
like for us this morning, it's unusual for us to get picked up and come over here. It's been a while since we've been asked to do that. I, I don't know if you've been criticizing my sermons or something, but, <laughs> no, but you know, it was, a, again, kind of a new experience for a while where, where our friend comes and, and picks us up. We have a nice visit coming over here in this very familiar setting, but hadn't been here for a while. And it's good to be here. Our experiences have to be taken into account no matter what's happening. Some of you I know are going through uh, difficult times in terms of your health. But to know that God is there. Because, well, the three things I want to say is first of all, the experiencing of life. Experience it. Make the most of it. Even when it's the rough stuff, you don't deny it. You just say, all right, that's what's happening right now. I'm experiencing it and making the most of it. But then, a beautiful, beautiful part of the passage is where Paul says, believe. And that's, the light up here is really bad, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I don't have sermon notes I have to look at. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it says, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Believe. And how is that for you today? Are you believing? Do you know that God loves you and God gave himself so totally for you by Christ's death on the cross? Do you believe that uh, this isn't just grape juice and bread, but it's symbols of something very, very important as we need to be fed on what God has to give us today. Believe that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you're going through, believe that. So we have our experiences, some good, some bad, some in between somewhere. And then we believe and then the third thing that happens is rejoicing. And again, in the scripture, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your whole household. And then uh, the rest of the passage, you know, they, they spoke the word of the Lord and to all who were in the house and at the same hour of the night, he took them, washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. Baptized without delay. You don't wait when you need what God is going to give you. Let that happen. Don't say, well, I need to think about it for a while. I'm not sure I should take communion this morning. I'm in really bad shape today. Friends, that's exactly when you need to take communion. Don't put it off. And then he brought them into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. So the rejoicing is an important part of that, isn't it? When I come here, when Judy and I come here, it's uh, a part of it's old, renewing old friendships. You know, folks I haven't seen since the last time we've been here. And part of it is just uh, knowing and believing that God is at work in everything that happens here. And so there are things to rejoice in. How's, how's the rejoicing going in your life? 
I know some days it's hard, but when we come here to this place, when we believe, then we will rejoice because God loves us so much. Just allow that love to fill your life, to move in every fiber of your being as you reach out to a hurting world. You know, there's going to be somebody today who's going to come to your mind. And you're going to say, you know, that person maybe needs a little more attention today. That person needs a little touch of a caring hand. That person needs hope. That person needs love. Think about it. And allow that to be something that's real in your life. So we experience life in its fullness. The good, the bad, the ugly. That sounds like a Clint Eastwood movie, doesn't it? But, <laughs> but that, <laughs> and it is. But you experience life in its fullest. And then be grateful. Believe that God loves you. That Christ died for you. That he's given us these elements to remind us of that wonderful love. And then rejoice. We did a little bit with the kids here, you know. Whatever, you know. Find the ways to rejoice. And sometimes that will be in the midst of a time when people you love are going through difficult times. But keep the light of Christ shining. Keep the love alive. Keep hope real in your life. And be very, very grateful because of God's love for you. So basically that's it. Experience life in its fullest. Believe that God loves you. Rejoice and keep the light of Christ shining. I like coming here for many reasons. Most of all, first of all, it's the people, the old friends who many I've known for many, many years. The music, the music is always a special gift to us. But it's also because wherever we come with the sacrament of communion, we're reminded of God's love for us. And it makes us rejoice. Do you have something you can rejoice in today? Oh, of course you do. Even when it seems that things are so down, you just let God's love lift you up, keep you going. Keep you strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we turn to a time of prayer. You know in your life those people who need special prayer that when it talks here about uh, prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. The intercession means you're, you're praying for, some, for your needs, for other people's needs, and uh, the burdens that they're bearing. So let's spend a moment now in silence just uh, thinking of the people who need our prayers, who need our support, who need our caring. Let us be involved in silence as we pray, pray our prayers of intercession. Lord, we 
lift up the burdens we are bearing. We think about our family and friends who are going through difficult times. We think about all the needs of a hurting world out there and help us to be light to the darkness in the world, to bring hope and gratitude to a hurting world. And Lord, we lift up our prayers of thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. Allow us in this moment of silence to lift up our prayers of thanksgiving for the people, the events, all those things for which we are thankful right now. Thank you, God, for the love you shower upon us. Thank you for giving us each other and for giving us these moments of prayer and praise and thanksgiving. May our lives be filled with thanksgiving today and help us to find the time after our worship throughout the rest of our days and our family, with our friends, to be able to say thank you to you and to those who mean so much to us. All of this, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>